Hello guys, today we are going to do a lot of amazing things with respect to EDA. So, so Zomato dataset exploratory data analysis, right? So we are going to complete this today. So before we start, please make sure that you download the data set. Inside my data set, I have so many things. I'll just show you. You'll be having files like country code .xlx, zomato .csv, file wall json file 2 json file 3 json file 4 json file 5 json today the data set that we are going to use is zomato data set uh, i have found out this particular data set from kaggle so i put this entire link over here github link so you can download the data set from here also you can download it from the pinned comment so let's go first of all uh, i'm just going to import some basic libraries import pandas as pd import numpy as np import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and one more library that i'm going to use is something called as cborn and finally we will be using matplotlib inline so that the images or any visualization gets displayed here itself i'll keep it restricted to all these things and understand the main thing the main thing is that whenever you are performing EDA, that is exploratory data analysis, you really need to think about the data, what the data is basically seeing or telling you, right? That is most important. So whenever you have a specific data set, even though if you don't have much domain knowledge, some basic information definitely you'll be able to capture it so what we are going to do over here is that till now we have actually uh, imported all the libraries now let's go ahead and first of all let's download the data set from here so here you can see that there is a data set called as zomato.csv country code.xlx and there are multiple json file now why this json file was given guys because this json file is in the form of this json format okay this format has been converted already into zomato.csv. Now, how it has been uh, converted, you really need to write a Python script to convert this. We will not see this right now, but in the later stages, I will also show you how we can convert this JSON file into zomato.csv. That part, we will do it in the later stages in the upcoming classes. But today, we have one xlxx file, one csv file. We'll try to combine this file also. We'll try to see what all information you have in this specific file. So let's start. So first of all, as usual, I'll just write df, my data set, and I'll write pd.read underscore csv, and I will read the data set, which is zomato.csv. Now, when you are actually importing the zomato.csv, the other thing that you need to see is over here is that if I just execute it like this, so here I will be getting some errors. It says that UTF-8 codec can't decode byte 0 XED in position 7074. 7044. Whenever you get this kind of error, always remember that you have to use some kind of encoding format. Now in this case, what encoding you will be using? If you probably go and see in read underscore CSV and press shift tab, here you will be able to see a lot of options. So one options I'll see over here, encoding, encoding somewhere it will be, or you can see the parameters, you can search the parameters over here with respect to encoding. What you need to put over there, you can play with three to four different values, but understand you need to have UTF-8 encoding. So for this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use an encoding. And uh, remember this encoding, I did not understand, I did not use directly in the first instance, but I used after exploring some of the things over here with respect to the kind of error so encoding here i'm going to use latin dash one you have different different encodings again utf-8 encoding uh you can just check out the documentation over there so i'm just going to use latin one and then i'm going to basically say df dot head now if you go and see over here these are all my data sets that are available over here uh, it's a huge data set with respect to the number of columns but understand uh, this is how we read the data set over here <clears throat> and with respect to this you can check it out uh, all the features and all but now one thing that we have done is that we have imported all the data set over here in my inside my df let's go to the next step now so this is my data set over here that is present now the next step what i am actually going to do i'm just going to see what all columns i have 
inside my data set so now this is in the basic eda part so over here you have restaurant id restaurant name country code city address locality lo locality verbose longitude latitude cuisines average cost for two currency and many more features are actually present over here just go and search for pandas documentation anytime you have any kind of queries with respect to what encoding you have to run and all you can just directly search for it you can search from here when you search from here anyhow anywhere you will be able to see it why encoding is used why utf8 is used so from here you have to explore it over here you can see encoding as none right why it is basically used just click on this try to understand that specific keyword now the next thing over here let's go ahead and let's see one more way of understanding about the data set is like df.info if you write df.info here you will be able to see what all columns are there whether this column is non-null non or null whether it is what is the data type of this here you can see int 64 int 64 is specifically for integer variables whenever you see objects in pandas in data frame object basically means strings it can it can also mean like it is maybe a categorical variable it may be a text variable it can be anything over here so here you can basically see all those things you also have float uh, you have objects objects wherever objects is there just consider that it may be a categorical variable it may be an integer variable it may be a text data initially always you do this you uh, try to find out what are the columns try to find out what are the important information about the columns with respect to the data type now <clears throat> coming to the next step now let's see what we can further do what what actual information we can actually uh, come up with this there is also an inbuilt field keyword which is called as describe so this is a basic inbuilt function which is called a describe which will actually help you to find out all this specific information now one key important information from this is that here you'll be able to see that all the features that are basically taken inside this describe function right these are only integer features you will not be able to find out any categorical features, any text features, any object features over there. So here, definitely see, with respect to any feature that you see, restaurant ID. If I go and see restaurant ID, it is int 64. If I go and see country code, it is basically uh, int 64. If I go ahead with longitude, it is always float or int 64. See over here. Longitude, latitude, float 64. So all these values that you are actually able to see over here, this is completely based on your uh, integer variables because whatever thing you are doing like count mean standard deviation mean you have to basically find it out in the integer and numerical variable now i'll just give you a basic information in data analysis the first thing that i would like to find out is that we'll try to find out missing values first of all always it is very much important in our data set do we have missing values the second thing that we may probably do, uh, check, explore about the numerical variables. Third, I would like to definitely explore about categorical variables. These are some basic things because I need to know that how many categories are there, how many numerical variables are there. The fourth major thing that we probably do is that finding relationship between features let's go ahead and try to find out what are the missing values in order to find out the missing values you can basically write df dot is null dot sum so if i go and search over here you will be able to see that with respect to every feature it is just saying that how many features are basically having null value here you can see that zero zero is there zero is there zero is there what about duplicates i'll talk about duplicates also so here you can see in city zero is there address zero is there locality zero is there locality verbose zero is there longitude latitude zero is there but in cosines you can see that there are nine missing values remaining all you have zero missing values so here in cosines you can see that there are nine missing values if you want to do anything with respect to the missing values you basically have to work on this specific feature now can i find out any relationship with respect to cosines with any other target variables or any other independent features okay that we will try to do but right now you have got this specific information that that many number of missing values are there now this is one way 
in another way i will just write a simple code which will actually tell me all the informations all the features that has missing values over here so what i can basically do i'll say that <clears throat> features for features so i'll write df dot columns i want to check which all variables has missing values so i'm saying that for every features in df dot column go and check if df of columns df of columns which is represented by feature dot is null dot sum is greater than one so this is basically a list comprehension so here what i'm saying is that features for features in df dot columns that basically means we are using this temporary variable called as features which will iterate through df dot columns and then i will say that if that specific feature is null or dot sum is greater than one i should not write greater than one but instead i can write greater than zero also so if i go and execute it here you can see that i'm having cosines so definitely i'm able to get what is the specific thing with respect to this that i'm able to see the null value now let's go to the next step with respect to is uh, with respect to heat map can we plot something so for heat map i will basically be using sns dot heat map and here i'll basically put the condition which says that df dot is null and here i will say that in y because my second parameter is y tick labels if i go and press shift tab over here always try to see this feature and with respect to this particular feature what are i'm actually using x tick label is there y tick label is there right now i don't want to show much things in y so i'll just keep it as false because i'm focusing only on df with respect to that then i can also use c bar it is also another feature over there you can understand by just seeing the documentation what all things it can do and then i will use a c map and inside this c map i can use anyone i'll basically search for it over here you can see here more options is not visible you can go to the c bond documentation page and basically take out that specific information so here i'm going to use a c map which is called as varides so here obviously i am not able to see that nine records because it may be somewhere probably i'll not be able to see that probably in this specific thing i should have that right let's see sum sum cosines has nine okay the total number of let's say total number of df dot they are around 9551 rows so because of that it is not getting visible over here very small number of nan values so that is the reason we cannot see it but if there are many many you can definitely check it out so we have we have understood about the missing values and we have seen that now i have already told you that there is another data set which is called as country code now let's try to see that what this data set basically has so i'm going to write df dot underscore country and i'm going to say pd dot read underscore csv and i'm going to use and then i'm going to basically write df dot country dot head it is giving me an error let's see what is the error okay here also some problems with respect to invalid continuation byte i cannot use read underscore csv i have to use read underscore excel because it is an excel file otherwise again you have to use that same encoding things to make it work how to deal with missing values uh, that i will try to show you in feature engineering so here you have this one country code country code xls so what you have over here see country code country two features if i go and probably see my df dot columns do we have country code over here here also country code are there can we combine these two data frames so what we will do in order to combine we will be using pd dot merge so merge is a function which will actually help us to combine in the left i will give my another data set in the right i can give another data set so here i'll give df and here i'll give df df underscore country but let's see another feature so there will be one feature which will basically say on this on basically says that on which feature you are basically going to combine that two tables so here i'm just going to say on is equal to i'm going to copy this country code so here i have copied this country code and then it will basically be left as how and here there is also one more keyword which is called as how <clears throat> this how will basically specify whether you have to focus on left 
table or right table. So here probably somewhere you will be able to see this is how whether you want a left join, a right join or an inner join. But right now I want to really focus on my left hand side of table which is df because this has the entire data set. In the right hand side I just have one additional column that is country name. So in order to combine it what I am actually going to do I am just going to focus on left. So here is my left. And once you see this, you will be able to see that I will be able to get all the records and somewhere you will also be able to see country. See in the last thing, country is getting added. I will just save this in my final data frame which is called as final underscore df. So this is my final underscore df and now if you go and probably see final underscore df dot head and if you check the first two records, you will be able to find out everything. So finally, final underscore df is my uh, entire data set. Now let's go ahead inside the data set and try to explore what all things we have. There is also another way to check data types. If you want to check data types, you just have to write something like this, final underscore df dot d types. So there is also d types, which will actually help you to just get the data types information. So just use dot d types and there you will be able to see the entire data type. This on is basically used to match on which column you are basically going to combine. Just like how you do left join, right join on, on a specific column. If you, if you have seen my SQL of my videos, I have already uploaded. Let's go to the next step. Now let's try to do something amazing. And now let's try to explore something from the data. Now understand one thing is that. If I go and see this data, there are features like, okay, let's, let's open this. Let's open this final underscore df dot columns. Here you'll be able to see there are features like country code, city, address, locality, locality, verbus, longitude, latitude, cuisines, average cost for two currency, this, this, this are there. Let's pick up something. Okay. Let's pick up uh, probably, let's see that I, I, I just want to find out something. Okay. And mainly understand. Whatever things I will do right now, I will make sure that I'll write observations for those. So what I'm actually going to do over here is that let's say that I'm going to use something like this final underscore df dot country dot value underscore count. What I'm actually doing over here, I'm just trying to find out how many different countries are there. And with respect to this particular countries, so in this records, right, with respect to a specific countries, how many records are there? So in India, you will be able to see 8652 records. In United States, you'll be able to see 434, United Kingdom 80, 60, 60, 60, 60. So from this, what kind of observation do you feel that you can come up with? Can you say that Zomato is mostly available in India itself? Obviously in USA, they just have a website which they will recommend some kind of restaurants. But just understand one thing over here is that in India, the main base of Zomato is there. So maximum number of transactions that may probably be happening is in India, right? I hope everybody is able to understand, right? So from this, this information you are able to get. Now, if I write dot index, now with respect to the dot index, you'll be able to see I'm able to get all the country's name with respect to that specific records, okay? So let me just save this probably in a variable, which is like country names. I'll tell you why I'm doing it. Everything will make understand completely. After this, I'm going to plot some pie chart. I'm going to plot some pie chart. Now, similarly, if I use the same thing and if I execute it with dot index, you will be able to see that I'm getting this country names. But with dot value counts, I will also be able to get dot value counts. I'll be able to get sorry, countries dot, sorry, value counts dot value, dot values. Let's see, dot VAL values. Okay. So with respect to dot values, I'm actually getting all the number of records for that particular country name. Now this too, I have the reason why I'm doing this here is that because I'm going to create some pie chart. Now, how do we create a pie chart? So you use plot dot pie and with respect to this, you use plot.py and with respect to this, you can actually put out all your variables. So I'm going to press shift tab. I need to have my X variable. 
if I am actually putting plot uh, pie, pie chart over here, I definitely have to use this. Now over here in the X value, I will try to use my names or values, whatever things you want. Let's say that I want to use my values. So here I will store this as my country value. So I'm going to put this entirely over here in the X axis because I want to see in the pie chart which country has the maximum transactions or maximum uh, online orders or maximum kind of orders over here. So I'm going to use this as my X axis. So this is my X axis in plot.py. So here if you expand it here, you'll be able to see it. And then you have labels. This is important. Okay. Labels is basically to give the labels on top of it. So I'm just going to use labels is equal to I'm going to assign this value to something like country name. Okay, country name. So these two things are there. Now if I execute it here, you'll be able to see that I'm getting a plot. Now this plot looks really bad because obviously the percentage of the information spread towards the different different countries is very less. So it is like jumbled up complete. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to say which are the top five countries, top five countries or top three countries. So top three countries that uses Zomato that is based on your transaction, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to use colon three. Here also I'm going to use colon three, colon three. So that basically says from entire all the values over here, I'm just going to take the top three values at uh, top three countries and I'm going to just display. Now it looks good. Now, which is the top three countries that is basically using India, United States and United Kingdom, right? So I hope you are able to understand over here with respect to the pie chart, like how is my data distributed and over here definitely with respect to Zomato, Zomato base companies in India. So obviously you can come to a conclusion that maximum number of transactions will happen in India. Itself. Now one more thing that I probably want to add is something called as percentage because I need to see some percentage also, right? That would be pretty much amazing, right? So what I'm actually going to do over here, there will be a parameter which is called as percentage also. And that parameter is something called an auto percentage. So I'll use this auto percentage and I'm going to use one property if I want to see one property over here, what will I assign to this? You can assign one format and that format I can basically write something like this. This basically says that after this, after the decimal, two values will be mentioned when it is getting converted into percentage. So I'm just going to remove this double quotes and this will definitely work. Then play with it. If I write, if I remove this two, what will happen? If I remove this, if I remove F, what will happen? Just try to play with it. Now, if I execute it here, you can see now 94.39 percentage is basically the orders are from India. 4.73 transaction is from United States. 4.87 is from United Kingdom. So here you need to write your observation. Now tell me, suggest me what observation should I write over here? From this diagram, what kind of observation that you can see? You just need to add this particular property to get the percentage values. Tell me what is the observation that you will write? Zomato maximum records or transactions are from India. Okay. And then after that, USA and then United Kingdoms. You have to write your observation in your own words. Here I've just written something, but just try to write. So here observe, Zomato maximum records the transaction are from India after that USA and then United States, United Kingdom, sorry. So this is my first observation that I have been able to take from this pie chart. Major business is happening in India, you can say and all. A lot of things can come, okay? Everybody is clear with this. I hope it's very simple till here, okay? Now, Let's go with respect to the next one that is numerical variables. How do we identify how many numerical variables are there? How many numerical variables are or forget about numerical variables. Let's do some exact relationship uh, numerical variables. We can check it, check it in later stages. Uh, but I want to really do more observation things, more uh, relationships things so that I will be able to see something. Now, if I go and write final underscore df dot 
columns if i execute this here you can see some amazing features which is called as aggregating rating because i want to also see with respect to the rating from which country more rating is actually coming and i want to see this data which is called as rating color rating text and all okay so what i'm actually going to do i'll just write a small query final underscore df dot group by i'm going to use a group by operation and with respect to a group by operation here i'm going to use features which is called as aggregate rating aggregate rating and then i will also use rating color see this everybody rating color i'm going very slowly guys very very slowly i think you can write it down i am writing each and every line of code rating color and then i'm also going to use rating text rating text so i'm basically going to uh, group by this three main features and after this i'm also going to do one thing so if i group by this and probably execute uh, i'll be getting an error let's see what is the error rating text so it is, should be rating small t so if i execute here you can see that it is now a data frame group by object now if i write dot size so if you if i execute this dot size here you'll be able to see all the values like white not rated this 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 are there and similarly good 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 very good see over here one thing you can see that when the rating color is white that basically means your aggregate rating is 0, 0.0 if your rating is red then it is basically showing 1.8 1.9 is also red 2.0 is also red 2.1 is also red like this 2.4 is also red so all these are red red basically means it is poor it is poor so these ratings are poor with respect to this aggregate rating you can see that it is poor if i go with respect to the next one which is in orange color here you can see that these are my all average ratings from 2.5 to 3.4 then you have from 3.5 to 3.9 that is another rating over here here you can also see that these are good right so it is displayed in yellow color or the text is written in yellow color that like the, the rating colors are there and then from 4.0 to 4.9 we have very good and excellent so this information i know i have actually able to find it out so i'll also can write my uh, I'll, I'll try to write my own observation over here now what i'm actually going to do over here is that after i do this i'll convert this into data frame now in order to convert this into data frame what i will do is that i will just write reset underscore index and this is an invalid error the reason it is an invalid error because i have to continue over here reset underscore index and then i'm basically going to just say that rename or if i just execute this let's see what i'll get so here you can get see that i'm getting this particular things and this is my zero value since I've done group by, with respect to 0.0, .0 ratings, I have 2148 records. Then with respect to 1.8, I have one record. 1.9, two records. 2.0, seven records. Over here, zero is coming. So instead of this zero, I'll try to rename it with different column. So here I'm just going to use after reset index dot rename. And here I'm going to basically use columns is equal to, and I'm going to name it to zero colon let's say i'm using rating count now let's do one thing now see what i've done after doing reset index i'm using rename function and i'm saying wherever the columns is zero change it to rating count so once i execute this you can see that i'm getting one error because i have not closed it i will close it now so here i've closed it and here with this And now here you can see that I'm actually able to see this. Everybody, you just write down this code. I know many people will get stuck over here. Now we'll, we'll do multiple things with respect to this. So what are the important information that I'm actually able to get from here? Are they correlated? We'll try to find out. Don't worry. Right now I've still not gone into correlation. Those are some inbuilt. Directly you're using inbuilt. I don't want to go into inbuilt right now. Now over here, main features. Everybody has written this. Final underscore df dot group by aggregate rating rating color rating text dot size dot reset index dot rename columns you are renaming from zero to rating count so 
here you can see that aggregate rating is there rating color is there rating text is there rating count is there so all these informations you have with yourself right all these amazing information you have over here now let's go to the next step now what i'm actually going to do over here is that i have my rating count information reset index basically means it will just reset this index this index by default whatever index is coming you have to reset that so i hope everybody has done this now i will just save this in a variable this variable will play a very important role guys now so i'm i'm giving you another 1 minute please write it down so ratings is equal to this one df final underscore df dot guys please write it down if anybody is not write it, uh, written down then again i am going to share it to you here please write in down this particular code because it will be very much important now i have all these things if you go and see ratings so here you have all the values average rating rating color rating text and rating now let's go ahead let's go ahead and let's plot some amazing beautiful diagrams now i want to really find out this all relationship with respect to different different countries with respect to different different problem statements with respect to this how see how as a data analyst data scientist you have to think okay this is my data set okay probably what what type of visualization i can draw from this because i want to do some kind of eda okay what what kind of things i can do from this just by seeing the data i can definitely come up with one conclusion is that around 2148 ratings have zero rating maximum number of people have actually given zero ratings that basically means they have not rated the app or the entire zomato app itself right so here what we are focusing on we are trying to understand okay maximum number of ratings zero basically means person has not given any ratings right so here you can see rating text is not rated right people who are giving ratings you can see poor average good along with that colors are also given so can we plot this in an amazing way so that we can understand in a visualized way also so let's go ahead from this i can come up with conclusions again i'll write conclusions conclusions is very much important observations i can also say observation so this is my observation from this data set the first observation is that the first observation is that whenever the rating is from 4 to 4.9 or let's say from 4.9 to 4 sorry 4.5 to 4.9 so here i'm going to write the observation when rating is between 4.5 to 4.9 this indicates what does it indicate it indicates that it is excellent probably the food that was delivered was basically excellent second thing that we can come up with this observation is that here you can see that from from 3.5 to 3.9 when the rating when when ratings are between 3.5 to 3.9 here you can basically say that it is very good i hope 3.9 only right no 4.0 to 4.5 extremely sorry i missed that 4.0 to 4.4 the ratings are very good the third thing that i can come up with this that is that if the rating is between 3.5 to 3.9 here the rating is good so this is my observation because i can definitely see from the data right and remaining all please go ahead and write it down okay so another observation from 2.5 to 2.9 it is average so i'm just going to copy this 2.5 to 3.0 2.9 wait 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 average 3.0 to 3.4 is average so 3.0 to 3.4 is average so this is my next observation and fifth i will go ahead and write when the rating 6 i am going to write when the rating when the rating is between 2.5 to 
to 2.9 uh, and it is 2.0 to 2.4 right so 2.9 how much it is average again this is also average uh, 2.0 to 2.4 is poor right so these are some of my observations. just complete down all the observations that you can find out from this and one more thing that you can see that zero rating has been given by many of the people right so these are all my observations with respect to this but if i'm writing observation it is better that we also draw some kind of diagrams now here I'm going to basically draw a diagram. So this is my ratings. So here I'm going to use aggregate rating. Let's say that this is my rating dot head. So here I have aggregate rating, rating color, rating text, rating count. So I'm going to use now Seaborn bar plot. Let's see, can we visualize with the help of bar plot something in this? So here I'm basically going to use uh, in bar plot, always understand what all features you have. So here you have X, Y, Hui, data order we order everything is there but what i am going to do i'm just going to do a simple bar plot so here in the x-axis i'm going to basically use aggregate rating so i'm going to use aggregate rating in the y i'm basically going to use rating count let's say that i'm going to see the relationship between aggregating rating aggregating uh, aggregate rating and rating count see this is my aggregate rating and this is my rating count i want to basically draw a bar plot and basically check how the graphs look like okay so the third parameter here i'm going to basically use data is equal to ratings so once i write this and execute it here you can basically check out how beautiful it looks now the diagram looks smaller so what i'm actually going to do i'm just going to put one simple settings to increase the diagram uh, so that you'll be able to see it in a better way. Okay, and that settings is basically there in the matplotlib So I'm going to use something like this and there is another setting which is called as matplotlib.rc params figure dot figure size here you can give with respect to width and height I'm now giving 12 6 so here uh, Matplotlib okay import matplotlib. I'm just going to write it down So now here you can see the diagram looks quite bigger now, if I probably go and execute the heat map over here again, let's see whether it will change or not. So now you can see this values, right? The missing values. Once I made the diagram a little bit bigger, you can see this, I've done it. Now, what is this missing code that we have missed with respect to increasing the figure size? Just write matplotlib.rc parent. So with respect to any parameter that you want to change, you can basically use this. Here I have set it to 12,6. Now, once you see this diagram from this diagram, you can definitely find out a lot of information. This diagram looks super cool. Zero rating is more than 2000 over here. Then you can see 2.2, 2.3, 2.9 complete. It looks like a Gaussian curve, right? Whenever you have a Gaussian curve, you get a good sense of feeling. Yes. Now let's do one thing. Over here, you can see that rating color is also there. So it is always a good way that we should also color this aggregate rating with the help of colors that is given over here. So this is the code. Everybody write it down. X aggregate ratings, Y rating count. Now, as I said, okay, I have this coloring text, rating color. I have this white, red and all. Should we use this colors over here also and pr probably try to get in the form of colors and then try to see it. So that also we'll try to do it. Okay. So to get the colors, uh, what I'm actually going to do, I'm just going to copy the same thing entirely. There is one more parameter which is called as hui. So if I write hui is equal to rating color. If I write this and execute it, you will be able to see, see over here, orange color, green color, red color and all. But understand whatever color is there, this is not matching right white looks like blue so this is wherever you can see blue right it is basically showing you zero rating but according to this white rate white this zero should have white color right so what i'm actually going to do over here is that we have to map the colors also now how to map the colors we will try to see so mapping the colors let's see over here so mapping i'm going to basically use palette 
and inside this palette I'm going to basically use different different colors so the first color that I want to show over here is something called as white the second color that I want to show is red the third color that I want to show is orange it it should be in the list okay the fourth color that I want to show in in yellow the fifth color that I want to show is in green the sixth color also I want to show it in green so here is what I have written in palette this palette is a feature that is present or uh, is an attribute that is present in bar plot where you can give your own colors as it is required based on your requirement so once I execute this now let's see some error is there has no okay palette spelling is wrong I guess it should be TTE P A L E T T E palette so once I execute this and let's see now so now you can see that I'm getting the perfect color right white is white then red then orange then this then this then this now from this also what kind of observation you can basically get right what kind of observation maximum number see I'll again write observation first of all you write down the code everybody you will be able to see that I'm getting the colors but just go ahead and write down the code and quickly see that what type of graphs we are able to get over here white is invisible don't worry it's fine you want to make it in different color then make it instead of white use it blue now here you have this right now from this what kind of observations we can actually get so observations i'll write it on over here again observation first observation that i would like to make not rated basically means this blue color count is very high then the second thing is that now second observation that you can see that maximum number of ratings are between 2.5 to 3.4 maximum number of ratings are between this so definitely these two observations you can basically find it out this two observation you can definitely find it out clear everybody this two observations we can basically find it out now just imagine that if you have some ratings as missing then what do you do suppose let's say that a person has rated but you have some missing values now can't you think that now probably you can use the values between 2.5 to 3.4 as an average right so this is what type of observations you can basically have this is what because maximum number of observations or ratings are between 2.5 to 3.4 so you will try to find out the average between them and then try to get it so i hope you are having fun guys clearly you are able to understand now the next step we will also see right now we have just seen with respect to aggregate rating and rating count i probably also want to use with respect to just the coloring part this rating color I want to plot this as a count plot so count plot let's plot it so I'll be going to use sns dot count plot and here I'm basically going to use x is equal to rating color okay in count plot we basically use this for plotting with respect to categorical variables so here also you basically give an x and y value and hui value so here I'm giving X value and then I'm also going to give my data which is my ratings and then again I can give my palette over here with the same list that I have actually defined over here palette the color should be same right so that is the reason I'm just going to copy this entirely and paste it over here so once I execute it here you'll be able to see I'm getting every time I write the wrong spelling so here you can see white red orange yellow green dark green this is not respect to current count guys don't worry okay this y y axis here you are able to see over here but understand in rating what you have what you have you basically have something like this right so white is only one record red is so many records right this is my red they are around five records then orange they are around seven to eight records right yellow there are on this many records green they are this many records don't consider that this count is basically your rating count no 
This is the frequency. How frequently it is basically present in this uh, data frame. Now let's go ahead and do some more in-depth, in-depth analysis, in-depth. Now you will get more confused. Now I'll give you a question. Please try it out from your side, okay? Find the countries that has given, find the countries or country name or countries, country, country's name that has given zero rating. Now this is my, one of my query for you all. Try to do it and I'll wait. I'll wait for you all. Let's, let's try to do something guys. You should be getting some queries at least. Very uh, important interview question as a data analyst. Find the country name, country's name that has, that has given zero ratings. Please do it everybody. I'll be waiting for you. That has given zero rating. How do you do it? You will definitely get more confused. That is where a data analyst will come. Find the country's names that has been given that has given zero rating. I'll also try till then. Final underscore df dot columns. So I need to basically get all the country name. So country name is obviously there. Okay. And uh, those who are given zero ratings. If zero rating is there, probably I can identify with uh, zero ratings. I can identify with aggregate rating. Or uh, I can also identify with rating color. Okay, so two parameters I can definitely uh, find out with. So what I'm going to do over here is that I'm just going to say rating color. Let's use rating color. Rating color. If I say if the rating color is equal to white. White is capital or small? White is capital. So if I execute this here, I'll be getting like this false, false, true, true. So I'll just write final underscore df. So here so many information I'm getting now. City, 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 city. So many records are there. But I don't think so. This is right. Because here I may see different rating also. So here what I will do, I'll do group by. And here I will specify my country. So if I execute this, this is my data frame. So here again, I'll be doing dot size dot reset index. So if I execute this now, I'm able to get it. Brazil, five different zero ratings is given. India, 2131390 ratings has been given. United Kingdom, one United States, three. So again, what is the observations that you can basically say? So here, write down the observations again. Now here, observations are what? Right? Just, just say uh, observation, maximum number of zero ratings are from Indian customers, right? No, no, it's not about imbalanced data set in this case. Uh, because if you see the data set, right, over here, 2139. Zero ratings. See, out of the total ratings, how much is the total rating that we saw? 2148, right? And from them, if you try to see, 2139. It's a huge number. This is not getting used for models, guys. Because we don't know what we need to predict right now. We are just analyzing the data, taking out information from that data. Okay, next question. Next question to you. Find out which currency which currency is used by which country. So this is my next question to you all. If you probably go and see final underscore df dot head, you will be able to see this specific thing. So, sorry, dot columns. I will just write it as dot columns. So, here you have um, 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 
let's say where it is currency is there okay currency is there so just try to do this find out which currency is used by which country if you want all the list of records what you will do so what i am actually going to do now i'm going to use final underscore df there are two i i want basically country with respect to currency so what i'm actually going to write over here i'm going to basically say country comma currency and then i'm going to basically use group by again and group by will again be based on these two groups that is country and currency dot size dot reset reset index reset index is used in many ways so here you can see i'm actually getting australia dollar brazil brazilian real canada dollars indian indian rupees um indonesia rupee new zealand and all so two things one is group by dot size dot reset index that's it you don't have to do group by by everything you have to just focus on two records two features that is this and that now here one more feature is there see has online delivery or not so my next question to you all for those people who have done this the next question is that which countries do have online deliveries online deliveries option so india has 2423 uae has 28 amazing that's nice that basically means that the online delivery is only available in india and us but let's say that i want to find out uh, all the countries that has or has not okay i will just use this code so reset index that's it so what he has done is that he has basically used uh, two features has online delivery country group by has online delivery country and size dot reset index so here you can basically see that australia it does not has any brazil no online delivery canada no online delivery why india how come india is again coming over here why india is getting repeated again okay in india also probably in some of the reasons uh, online delivery may not be there perfect in india in some of the regions you will not be finding online zomato delivery available okay so because of that some records you will not be able to see so but here you can see main two countries that has online delivery is india and uae so obviously make some observation from this and try to find out so here i am basically going to basically say observations again what is my observations over here i will basically say number 1 my first observation is that online deliveries are available in india and u a done damal next question now the next type uh, that i am actually focusing on is that i'll give you one question like how we did with respect to the countries how we did with respect to the countries similarly try to find out or create a pie chart for cities distribution i hope everybody is understanding the question so here if i write final underscore df dot columns you will be able to see there is also a city now i want to create a pie chart with respect to this specific cities again the same thing like how we did it for country so i'll go up <coughs> i'll go up and i'll copy this two things let's see so here is one here instead of writing country i'll write it as city and then this is my values this is my index so this is my countries uh, cities that from where the order has happened and i'll try to draw a plot a uh, pie plot okay so here i'll say plt dot pie and here i'm going to give two things one is with respect to values and then with respect to index final underscore df country dot values i hope this works 
find x, x and y. I have to basically given this as labels, okay? Labels. Or let me make it little bit easy for you. Let it make easy for you, okay? City values. I'm going to save it in this city labels. I'm going to save it in this. And this will basically be using index. So I've executed this. So this will go with city values. And this entirely will go with respect to city labels. So I let's say that I want to get the top five cities for cities distribution for top five city distribution top five city distribution so here i will just use colon five and here also i will be using colon five so once i execute this here you will be able to see this the first so oh, it's coming as india why city labels plot dot by city value city labels why 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 mm -mm 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 -mm. I think there is some mistake. Plot pi. Final underscore you can. Oh, I have to use city. Mistaken, mistaken, mistaken. I had copied, right? So you should not do copy and paste a lot. Don't do copy paste. So New Delhi has the maximum number of transactions. Gurgaon, Noida, Ghaziabad and Faridabad. Why not Bangalore? I think in the data set Bangalore is not given. After this I will also add one auto percentage. And here I can basically specify 1.2 F. So if I go and see this here you will be able to see percentage. So maximum number of transactions is basically happening from New Delhi. So guys, overall, how was the session, everybody? One assignment for you. So assignment, find the top 10 cushions. Cushions basically means food, okay? Food item. So this will be for you. Just do it. One assignment and remaining all, I think I've done it. Now in this data set, I had never used this data set for doing machine learning modeling. I needed this data set to find out what all information I can capture from it. And finally, I was able to do so many things, right? I, I did not worry about distribution and all. That is the part when we actually create a model with respect to the data set at that point of time we do. So I hope you liked this particular session. It was fun. It was comedy. It was it was good. Can we group the other cities under rest? Yes. Obviously you can do it. Right. Tomorrow, another amazing day, another amazing data set so that we will be working on it and definitely you'll be able to learn a lot as I said. Right. Visit the website guys because here I am going to give the entire uh, materials. Have you seen my web website? How do you like to rate my website guys? So this I created in 3 to 4 hours. Probably I will also start showing you how to create websites. So this entirely I created 3 to 4 hours. So everything will get updated in this article also. See this? This live session is going on right now currently. See? All the materials will get uploaded over here, data set materials. So please make sure you do this and yeah, uh, start exploring it. Okay guys, so thank you. Keep on rocking. I'll see you all in tomorrow's video. And yes, I will see you in tomorrow's session. Tomorrow we'll have more in-depth session. Thank you everybody. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you guys. I hope everybody has downloaded the data set. You'll have this two data set. One is test and train right i'll talk about the problem statement and today we are also going to do feature engineering on both these things right as usual today we are going to do 
black friday data set i'll talk about the agenda everything eda and feature engineering we are going to do both of this and we will keep our model ready for model training ready means cleaning doing everything cleaning i am preparing the data for model training we are going to do this today so this is the two things that we are going to do this is the agenda so after doing this uh, you can basically use any kind of model and start working on it so quickly what are the basic library that is re required start uploading it right import pandas as pd i'll talk about the problem statement what exactly it is import numpy as np import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt import cborn as sns and then matplotlib dot pyplot as plt ye sorry inline so this is basically given in kaggle okay so in kaggle whenever you get a specific data set what do you have to do train and test that all steps i'll show you so that you can also participate in kaggle so let's go ahead and let's go ahead with first of all importing the data set always make sure that you write the comment so importing the data set the data set is already given to you so let's say i'm going to name it as df train because i have two data set one is train and one is test data so this df train i'm just going to write pd dot read csv and i'm just going to give my data set name black friday train dot underscore train dot csv i have renamed the name guys for you it will be train dot csv okay and then if i probably write df underscore train dot shape i will be able to see it or if i write df dot head i'll be able to see it so I'll, I'll talk about the data what this data is basically about uh, so this data is an e-commerce data so uh, people who have bought some kind of products and based on that we need to predict what is the purchase capacity again understand i'm just going to basically talk about the problem statement here we want to build a model i'm just going to put the problem statement over here let's say i'm going to put a problem statement over here everybody read the problem statement anyhow i will be giving you all these things materials everything in the github don't worry so i'll also put the data set link over here data set link so data set link is this data set link and this will get saved over here so what is the problem statement so this is the problem statement that we are going to focus on so the problem statement is that a retail company abc private limited wants to understand the customer purchase behavior it is an e-commerce data set data set is also very huge so it will be very good to work on it against various products of different categories they have shared purchase summary of various customers for selected high volume products from last month the data set also contains customer demographics like age, gender, marital status, city type, stay in the current city, product details, product ID and product category and total purchase amount from last month. So over here now they want to build a now they want to build a model to predict the purchase amount of customer against various product that will help them to create a personalized offer for customer against different products. So this is the problem statement over here. The problem statement is very simple. You need to create a model to predict the purchase amount of a customer against various products, right? So suppose if I have, if I give this information like this product with this product information, these all things I give, then we should create a model that will be able to predict this purchasing capacity, right? So this is the entire information regarding the problem statement, okay? So this is what we are going to do interesting we'll solve the problem here only in front of you so i have read the training data set the next step that you have to do is basically start reading the uh, test data set now train data set test data set see whenever you are given train and test obviously 
what initially you have to do you have to combine them in a kaggle competition always remember to combine them so that all the data pre-processing that we can do we can perform on both the data set so here i am going to now import the test data right so here i'm going to say df underscore test is equal to pd dot read underscore csv and here i'm going to basically write black friday test dot csv df underscore test dot head in the test data you will not be able to find the output vari variable so here you can see only take product category 3 is there here additional purchase column is there right so now if you want to combine the train and test data how do you do it the next statement is merge both train and test data so how do you merge both train and test data we can use pandas dot merge can we use pandas dot merge or pandas dot concat or pandas dot append what what you want to use let me try it some different way now here i am basically going to say df1 dot append there is an append function sorry df underscore train dot append and df underscore test so what will append basically do you can see the definition over here append rows of other to the end of the caller returning a new object right so i'm just going to do this and there is also one more parameter that i see with respect to sort so sort by default is false right so i'm just going to execute this and then i'm basically going to store this inside my df so this is my df dot head now you can also append it in different different ways i have no problem okay it is up to you so this is the first step that we have actually performed. merge also you can do but again understand we have to append it at the bottom right we are not merging it like this so merge if you want to do with merge if it is possible with merge try to do it instead of writing merge here i could also add written append merge also you can do it okay so this was the next step now let's go to the next step everybody so basic basic code that we have seen already right one is df.info we can check out this one here we can understand that how many different types of features are here so obviously int is there object is there object is there object is there int is there object int int float 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 is there so definitely when you see product id it will be a combination of both integer and uh, uh, different values so it is basically an object then you have gender obviously it has male and female so categories it is an object age is basically an object why age is an object because here you will be able to see age is given in some range 0 to 17 0 to 17 55 plus so this i can consider it as categorical variables i'll also show you how to solve that particular problem also but i hope everybody has got our understanding till here the next statement that we are going to basically find out is something called as uh, df.describe just to find out like what is the percentile values and all so here is just a basic information that we are going to differ now tell me um which which column do you think out of this is just waste you can directly blindly you can delete it see over here there is a column which is called as user id user id is just a unique id over here so you can definitely go ahead and delete it okay user id will be of no use product category everything other will be getting used don't worry about that <laughs> but user id is definitely not useful so i am going to delete it so what i am actually going to do i am going to basically write df dot drop um df dot drop this is a statement which will basically use to drop the feature and here i can give any number of features any number of features with respect to my feature name so feature name is nothing but user underscore id so I'm just going to copy this, paste it over here, user underscore ID. And here, one very much important parameter if I see in uh, df.drop is axis. Axis is equal to zero basically means horizontally, right? Row wise. Axis is equal to one basically means vertically, right? Column wise. So we really need to drop it column wise. So here, I'm going to basically say it as axis is equal to one. And here, I'm going to specify in place is equal to true. The in place is equal to true what it will do is that it will remove that user id and it will update automatically into the df value so if i go and probably execute it and now if i go ahead and see df dot head you will be able to see that i'm actually able to see my product id gender 
all the other information perfect so here we have basically done this we have dropped the user id we have df dot head we have everything ready now let's go ahead towards the data pre-processing side now tell me how many categorical variables are there how many categorical variables are there just by seeing this one you have gender one you have age one you have occupation city stay in current city this 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 but before that I also need to make sure that how many number of missing values are there for the missing values I may do something which I will show you in the later stages but let's focus on fixing the categorical features right now so how many category features are there you see over here gender is there age is there city category is also there so we'll try to fix this category features because our model will definitely not be able to understand uh, how my categorical features will be there or not <coughs> marital status is already in numbers but let's see what all things will basically be there so let's go ahead and take up age and try to solve this convert this categorical into uh, uh, con categorical into a numerical we'll try to do that okay so first of all let's focus on this and let's go ahead now tell me with respect to gender i have male and female right with respect to gender i have male and female now what should i do in order to probably in male and female what kind of encoding i can definitely use so if i write pd dot get underscore dummies and if i give my df of gender if i execute it here i'll be able to get either male or female so here I'm actually getting ones or zeros, right? One is basically given to F, zero is basically given to male, okay? So either in this way you can do it, but again, see, what is the problem here? If I convert in this way, then I have to create another data frame, then I have to add this data frame over here, then delete this gender column. Can I do something within the data set itself where probably I can directly convert this wherever the F is zero, sorry wherever the uh, gender is f i'm going to convert this into 0 or 1 whether uh, m whether the gender is male i'm going to convert it to 0 to 1 so how we are going to do that guys how we are going to do that yes i can definitely use drop drop underscore first is equal to 1 i can definitely use over here but understand i don't want to do in this way because i have to save this somewhere then i have to add a column over here i don't want to do in that way i want to find i want to find out a way where directly I have to do it over here itself in this particular data frame itself. So how do I do it? So for this, I will be using a code, simple code. So I'll write df of gender and here I will say df of gender dot map. Map method, what it does is that, see, what does map method do? map method will basically map with respect to the conditions that i'm giving over here so here if i say my first condition is that wherever i get female i'm going to convert it into zero and wherever i get male i'm just going to convert it into one many people ask me when i'm teaching what is the map functionality in python so here you can see easily within this particular data set you will be able to see it over here now if i write df dot head and if I probably see this, you will be able to see now gender will be zeros and ones. So everybody write down this code. Okay, one more way is that directly I assign this to df of df of gender, right? So this way also you can do it. So both the ways, whichever way you feel you want to do it, just do it. Both the ways it will work. This is not ranking guys. Zeros and ones are not ranking. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is basically ranking. Uh, Zahid Hassan says, do we have to apply feature engineering on training set only or test data? No, on both. On both you have to apply. I'll show you how you have to apply both. Okay, perfect. So everybody has done this, right? So this is with respect to handling the categorical feature. Handling categorical feature age sorry gender so this is done now let's go to the next step now the next step what i'm actually going to do gender is done now we also need to handle age 
हैंडल कैटेगरिकल फीचर एज ना वाई आई एम से स्पेसिफिकली सेइंग एज बिकॉज हियर यू गो एंड सी एज इज व्हाट एज इज आल्सो अ कैटेगरिकल फीचर सी जीरो टू सेवनटीन जीरो टू सेवनटीन फिफ्टी फाइव प्लस सो फर्स्ट थिंग आई विल ट्राई टू एग्जीक्यूट समथिंग लाइक दिस आई विल राइट डी एफ ऑफ एज डॉट यूनिक so this will basically give me how many unique values are there in age like 0 to 17 55 plus 26 35 46 50 51 55 36 3 45 18 to 25 now if i have in this particular unique way now tell me how should i convert this categorical feature into some numerical feature so here also i can actually do encoding so the type of encoding what i will probably be doing many people will again get confused over here so why why you are doing like this so i'll just tell you so here also i am going to use df dot age and uh, i'll assign it to df of age right two things i can definitely do one is directly get dummies you can directly do pd dot get dummies see this if i write pd dot get underscore dummies right and if i give it for df of age i'll be able to get like this right and if i drop drop first is equal to true then i'll be able to get like this then what i can do i can save with this column names and i can put it inside my data frame i can do this okay but just imagine something guys here a domain knowledge will definitely come one very important thing do you think like shopping 0 to 17 years it will be very less right in an e-commerce website it will be very very less right whereas if i say 26 to 35 it may be more and where i say 18 to 25 it may be more 15 to 55 it may be more 55 plus it may be very less right or 46 to 50 it may be also very very less so here what we will do is that we'll just not try to convert this into dummies let's do some ordinal encoding only let's let's give some rank to it okay let's let's give some directly some values like 0 1 2 3 4 5 why i am saying to give 0 1 2 3 4 5 because if i am training the model my model maths will definitely be able to understand right my model maths will definitely be able to understand with respect to the values that we are given like 0 1 2 3 4 5 whatever values i am actually given with respect to the other features my model will definitely be able to understand this is also called as target guiding so we will do something like this okay but this this will definitely not work this is not a very good practice also so here i'm just going to comment it out and this will definitely not work instead what i will actually give is that i will say uh, let's apply the same map function which i had applied over here so here i'm going to basically give in this way map function and i'm just going to basically put it inside this here definitely i'll say age this age and mapping i will do for 0 to 17 first let's say for 0 to 17 i am actually giving some numbers let's say i'm giving it over here as 1 because at least some value should be there then 18 to 25 in the sorted order i'll try to give 18 to 25 my second one and here i will give it as 2 then third one again in the sorted order 26 to 35 i will give it over here because see my model when i'm training my model it will be able to understand this is called as target guiding target ordinal encoding then uh, what we have 36 to 45 i hope i'm doing it right colon here i'm actually going to give it as 4 and then after 36 to 45 i have 46 to 50 46 to 50 i have 5 and then i will be writing 51 to 55 and i will say it as 6 and then 55 plus i'll say it as 7 label encoding can also be done label encoding will also work perfect label encoding will also work but again understand 
for this again you have to for label encoding you have to import a library and then perform it here also you can do this way you will become good at maths don't put zero guys see as i said i as i'm saying right there will be some mathematical equations that will be happening so if you want to do label encoding how you'll do label encoding in python let's see some articles uh, i have some article from geeks for geek so let's see so i have to basically upload this entire thing right this entire code see entire code by using preprocessing label encoder and all but i don't want to do it because as i get a new data set over there also i should be able to apply all these things right so here i'll just copy this from sk learn you can see over here right and then you can basically do it with respect to df dot age and df dot age so you can execute this and automatically it will work do not hesitate to google it is up to you right it is up to you so you can also do this in this way this is the second technique so i have already done this now if i probably go and see my df dot head you will be able to see in age also i'll be okay i have not executed it huh? so i have executed it now if i go and see my df dot head you will be able to see one two three four like that you will be able to see see there will be hundred of ways label encoder fit transform for the test data you have to do transform but here i have actually combined it so this is not a good practice for this case suppose if i'm doing for train data for test data i will just transform it no need to give any 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 weightage guys arvind see our machine learning model will automatically understand so one more category that i have actually we have actually seen is something called as city categories see oh yeah city categories also there so for this i will just use pd dot get dummies if you want pd dot get dummies and then you can basically combine them but in order to do that also uh, what you will do so here i can basically say that pd dot get dummies and then i'm basically going to give my df of city name is city category so fixing categorical category city underscore category pd dot get dummies df of city category and here i'm going to basically say uh, drop first is equal to true so here i have all my values so i'm just going to save this in one variable where i'm going to say df underscore city let's say so df underscore city is this one dot head now i have to combine this entire cities with this df okay which i have actually shown you before and now i hope everybody is done till here so this two features will now get combined to this data set now in order to get combined into this particular data set what i will write is that i will say pd dot concat and then here i am basically going to give df and df underscore city and when i'm doing concatenation i also have to give my axis value as one so this i will save it in my df and this will basically be my df dot head so if i go probably in the last year you'll be able to see b and c now i don't require this city category i can drop the city category but i hope everybody is able to understand so why drop underscore first is equal to true because always understand if i have three categories two categories is sufficient to represent all the three categories now let me go to the next step let me quickly drop so drop I'll, i'm just going to write drop city category because i don't require this feature now right i don't require this feature city category right so i'm just going to do df dot drop and here i'm just going to basically say or uh, my category name which is city category but again understand here your axis will be one so what is the error not found in axis why okay it is city underscore category guys understand 
why we are doing this because any new data will come we have to again follow this entire thing okay this is entire steps we have to follow whatever things we have actually done this encoding everything will be done so here you can see df dot drop city category access equal to one that particular feature is gone so what i am actually going to do to make this operation permanently i'm going to use in place is equal to true so if i now go and probably check df dot head here it is entirely so bc is there this is there so we have fixed all these things till here we have uh, done a better work till here now let's go and check the missing values missing values city category is a category feature uh city category one is another is age and one is uh, gender so three categories we have fixed up axis is equal to one basically means column wise we are adding or we are appending that specific data frame in this axis is equal to one basically means we are deleting the column guys uh, again i have told you eda basics the prerequisite is that you need to know python you need to know some basic things if you are not knowing it difficult now with respect to uh, df dot is null missing values what i'm actually going to do i'm just going to do sum uh, df dot is null dot sum this is also a function now here you can see product category has so many null values purchase also has so many null values product category 2 has so many null values product category 3 has so many null values purchase has so many null values amazing now whenever null values are there people will get shocked what to do now everybody will get shocked what to do now okay categories are there should we replace categories with something just tell me purchase why null are there because this is the test data the null values that are present that is the test data that should be null only but this too we should definitely fix it up right we should this too we should definitely fix it up so what i'm actually going to do we'll focus on focus on replacing missing values focus on replacing missing values now when i focus on replacing the missing values what i'm going to do i'm going to basically replace the missing values for this two feature so we have to do some kind of data exploration for these two features so what i'm actually going to do i'm going to basically write df dot product category now tell me guys if i write dot unique tell me what kind of feature this becomes what kind of features this becomes or if i write dot underscore two dot unique what kind of features this will become will, will this become a discrete feature discrete categorical discrete continuous feature or whether this will become a continuous feature this will become a discrete feature guys see discrete because this is only getting repeated this will only get repeated so for the people who have attended my start session will definitely know this right so they will be definitely focusing on and they'll be knowing this entire thing okay so over here here you, you can specifically see that this will be a discrete feature okay this will entirely be a discrete feature now in a discrete feature if i have a nan value what is the best way to replace the missing values tell me quickly now this 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 should be a lot of discussions that needs to be done on this so tell me what should be a better way to replace the missing values what i will also do is that i'll make your work a little bit easy i will also write product category 2 and i will say value counts value counts basically will give me all the values that are present with respect to this okay value underscore counts so here you can see 8 is basically having this many values 4 is basically having this many records 6 is having this many records what do you think if i want to replace the nan values what is the best way to replace in this feature so here what we will do with respect to any categorical features or discrete feature the best way is to replace the missing value missing value with mode so in order to replace the missing value with mode okay mean don't use mean guys because mean will create a new category altogether so in order to replace the mode that is very much simple and uh, how do you do it just let me know how do you replace that with mode tell me guys
So first of all, uh, I'll write a simple code for you. Uh, <coughs> I will say df of product 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 category two. Okay, please think over it. Try to write the code, guys. Okay. So here I will definitely use something called as fill na. Fill na function is already there, which I have also mentioned or explained in my lot of lectures. So I'll say dot fill na, and here I'm basically going to say df of product category to dot mode. Right? See, if I if I basically just copy this entire thing, okay, and if I write df of product category dot mode. What will be the output that I will get? I will get this two output, 8.0. So if I want to find out the mode, what I have to do, I have to basically write something like this for this, right? Now here I'm getting two values. One is zero and one is 8.0. So this becomes a series. Now in order to pick up this value, I can basically use indexing. So if I use this, then I'll be getting 8.0, okay? So here what I'm going to do after this, I'm going to basically just copy this entire thing over here dot mode so once i do this this will get reflected over here and now if i probably write df of product category 2 dot <coughs> is null dot sum so here you can see that now my values are zero that basically means the replacement has happened clear Interesting problem. The data set is also quite huge. Now, similarly, what I'll do for product category three, because there are 54,000. Okay. So we will also do it for product category three. Okay. Product, product category three, category three, replace missing values. Again, I'm going to paste it over here. I'm just going to write dot three underscore three dot unique. So here also I see 14, 17, this, this, this is there. If I want to also want to see how, what is the value counts, I can basically write dot value counts. Dot value counts. So here it is all my values with respect to this particular value counts. Okay. So let's go ahead and replace it replace with missing values with modes i'm to uh, again i'm going to go in to copy please playing the missing value so here it is okay i'm going to just use it with product category three so now if i execute it now if i go and probably see my df dot head Okay, so here it is everything. So product categories three, this, this, this is fixed. Why shouldn't we just remove product categories? The reason is that because if I go and see df dot shape, here you have around seven lakh eighty three thousand records, and around five lakhs records are basically missing. If you see over here, five lakhs, two lakhs are there. You cannot just drop it, okay? Probably that may be an important information. Sir, you said for purchase column that missing values are fine because it is for test data, but train test split is random. No, Tritraj, we don't just do random, we do cross validation. Let's go to the next step. Anything that is left? One more category is this one, right? Stay in current years. So what do you think we should do for this? So here, if I say hashtag stay for current years, right? Stay in current city years. So if I write DF of stay to current city years, and if I write dot unique, so here I'm having two, four plus three, one, zero, okay? So what we can actually do, we can also consider this as four only, right? Because anyhow, if it is four plus also, it will be treated as four. It can be treated as four. If it is values also increasing, it is fine, right? 
So what we can do is that we can replace this 4 plus with 4. Now tell me how to do it. So I will write TF of stay in current years dot str dot replace and then I'm actually going to replace plus with with blank right. So if I do this I will probably be able to find out all these things right. So this entirely I can save it inside my df dot stay in current. So if I execute over here done. Some warning is there but it's okay. <coughs> so here you can see this. Now I don't have 4 plus I have fixed it. Another category any more categories. Today we are just focusing on solving categories. Now let's do one thing okay now even though we are basically checking categories we are we are basically checking other other things over here right if i probably just go and write df dot info so here we, we are seeing that product id is an object that is fine gender it is an integer that is fine age is an integer occupation is an integer stay in current city years is also an object but here you can see that i'm having values like 22444 so we need to convert this object into integers that is a major step that we have to actually do. So what we are actually going to do over here is that we have to convert this which is an object into integers. So how to do that? So convert because this kind of task also you may be getting. Convert object into integers. Can quick anybody tell me how to do it? It's very simple. Here I'm just going to write df of stay in current city years is equal to df of stay in current city years dot as type as type integer if i do this done now if i write df dot head or df dot info you will be able to see this so here you can see stay in current is basically assigned in 32 you can also assign int 64 by providing int 64 directly over here. Okay, there are two more columns which has b and c as u, u int 8. u int 8. What is u int 8? u int 8. It is an 8 bit assigned integer ranging between 0 to 255 decimals. It's okay. You can also convert that into int type. So if you want to convert that into int type, I will just use this two quotes. So what I will do? Here I will say B and C, right? So DF of B is equal to DF of B dot as type int and same thing I can copy and paste it for DF of C. Hello, execute it. Now if I go and probably see my df.info, you will be able to see this. Now once we have done this, the best visualization, what I feel, visualization is present in CBOT, which is called as sns.pairplot. If I give pair plot and just give df, see what is the amazing diagram, but it will take a lot of time because there are so many data points along with that so many data sets okay it is giving me an error let's say what is the error cannot re-index from a duplicate access df dot <coughs> duplicate points why this error has come It's okay. See, if there is something like a product type, right, that will actually get removed in the pair plot. That is the reason why do we use this. It will give an error. I'll have a look onto this, okay? Don't worry. Till then, let's see some other visualization diagrams, okay? <clears throat> Till then, let's see other visualization diagrams. So I, I'll just have a look why that probably is not coming, but I can definitely use another plot like bar plot. So let's say that I'm using bar plot. 
and I want to basically compare age with respect to purchase. So this will actually help you to find out who has purchased more or who has purchased less. And here there is a gender over here. So I'm just going to use a hui as gender. Okay, I've done some observation over here and data is equal to df. Okay, so let's execute this. So this is the diagram that you are getting. So age 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so which you can basically map with it. But definitely you can see that even 55 plus with respect to genders. For, so from this observation, if gender 0, 0 what we have replaced with male, right? Gender uh, 0 we had replaced with female or male. Mm, where is gender? Where is gender? I think for male, for female, we had made it is zero. Yeah. So from this, definitely you can come up with some conclusion that whether female has bought more or male has bought more. But over here with respect to the purchases, maximum amount of purchases, you can see that uh, male has a huge purchase. Uh, with respect to the orders also, we'll try to see we'll, with respect to different, different orders. This is nothing but visualization of age versus purchase. So please write down your observations. What do you feel with respect to this kind of things? Purchasing of goods of each range of age are almost equal. But we can conclude definitely that the purchasing percentage of purchasing goods of men over women is high. Right? Is this possible? No. <laughs> purchasing of men over men is high then women so this is the observation that i have done which is not at all possible right but data does not lie right so definitely all the other purchases with respect to the ages are uniform but purchasing of men is higher than women yeah nice i like it so this is my first observation Let's say with respect to purchase, we'll try to visualize the occupation. Okay. So visualization of purchase with occupation. So I'm just going to copy the same thing. And I'm going to paste it over here. So here I'm just going to say it as occupation. Uh, let's see the diagram. This will be quite huge because it will be stuffed, right? Occupations are many, right? Occupations are many. So you can just go and check out which all occupations are there. There are 20 different occupations. So from this data set, you will be able to find it out, the initial data set. And you can make some observations from this. Let's see where is occupation. Occupation with this, some categories are mapped, okay? So with respect to this, I I suggest that this is also uniform. It won't affect a lot. Let's compare uh, whether product category one, product category one versus purchase. Like many people have bought product category one because if you go and see the data set, then we'll be able to see it over there. So I'm just going to copy this with the bar plot. I'm going to write it over here, and I'm going to basically write product category one product so let's see product category one how many people have bought with respect to the purchases so that amount will be shown so here you can see this is the graph with respect to product category one similarly let's see with respect to product category two i don't know whether we'll be able to see it or not in the same thing we can see it two graphs two graphs will not be able to see it i guess it is coming no only one is coming okay i will remove this i think it will replace in that same order okay so i will just execute this product category one and then this will be my product category two and the next one is my product category three but observe this and come up with some conclusion guys 
here you can see with respect to 12,000 is there here till 14 to 16,000 product category 2 is sold bought more whereas product category 1 is bought the most right it is still 20,000 right <coughs> so definitely that information you can take it out from this particular graph any other graphs that you want to propose but you can definitely use this tell me guys is this more is this data set good for the model or not now because the type of data pre-processing we have done i think we are good to do it right we are good to do it we can also drop product id we can also drop product id now let's probably do the one last thing okay that is feature scaling okay feature scaling this will now become my df underscore test and then i can remove df dot purchase dot is null uh, see wherever the purchase in the purchase column it is null right that all belongs to the test data so i'm just trying to find out apart from is null how do i find out if it is not null so if you use like this so here by this you will be able to see this and here you can basically write df dot train so now you have your df dot train and uh, df underscore test so df underscore train and test you have now let's go to the feature scaling in the feature scaling how do you do it we basically apply standard scalar as a feature scaling so for that it's very much simple from sk learn dot reprocessing i'm going to import standard scalar and then i'm going to write sc is equal to standard scalar and on my train data set always remember df underscore test okay before that if you want to do train test split definitely go ahead and do it i don't have any problem so i can definitely write df underscore train you can do that x train x test y train y test it's up to you okay so uh, before this let me write one code where we will do the train test split for the training data so here what i am going to do sk learn train test split okay it is always good to google it and copy and paste and do it instead of writing it okay so i'm just going to copy this and paste it over here you also do that same thing don't tell me krish ping me the <laughs> queries or answer so here i'm just going to change it but before that let me write from sk learn dot model selection import train test split okay so here will basically be my df underscore test my x so my x will basically be df underscore train colon minus one i hope so it works so x dot head just make our x and y axis uh, so that it will get our independent and dependent feature so this is my x similarly for my y what i will do I will also create my y where I'll write df of colon no minus one will give, basically give my okay minus one is not there okay colon minus one colon colon how to get the last column no df of colon minus one will give you the entire thing double colon minus one so this will basically give your last value no it is not giving double colon no just a second i can basically say it as df of purchase right so this is my y value colon comma minus one will also work colon comma minus one will also work just give me a second guys so this is my x and y now what i'm going to do give it to my x and y here and here i will get a error why on input variable is inconsistent number of samples comma 36 why 
I made some mistake. X dot shape. Let's see. This is basically having 12 rows. That is fine. What is this having? Y dot shape. <laughs> hey, how come difference is there? My mistake. It should be df underscore trail. That was the mistake that I made. Fine, now it will work. Now I've got the same answer. Here I will basically go and execute it. X train, X test, X comma Y. df underscore train that I have written, but still I'm getting this error. Why? SQL under model import train test split. This, 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 this. X comma Y is there. Y is also here. Y dot shape also I'm able to get it. Same. Oh, one extra record is there. How come? One extra record, how come? Purchase is not the last column. Your screen is not visible properly, looking hazy. Then please reload it. Okay. Oh, purchase is not the last column. Mm, that is the problem. So I made one mistake over here. So what I will do is that I can basically say df dot train dot drop of purchase with access is equal to one now this will definitely work this is done so i have all my features over here if i do x dot shape now i have 11 columns then df underscore train this is there this is there perfect 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 us it happens i'll google it it happens now it is fixed see now df underscore train instead of writing like this now i'm going to do fit and fit transform on extreme so finally i will write sc dot fit fit underscore transform and here i'm basically going to write x underscore train which will basically give me x underscore train is equal to this one x underscore test is equal to sc dot transform on x underscore test why transform think over it so let's execute this and again it gives me an error why could not okay let's drop one last thing from this i think i could have dropped in df.train only and df.test only so that drop it that will be an assignment to you all i'm going to drop the product id in place is equal to true i don't want to get killed right now x underscore test product id this 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 done finished so 92 lines of code more than 100 lines of code i have written in front of you did the complete analysis now this is your data set go and train your model the next step is basically train your model that's it if you want to see correlation and all okay so here i will just name this file as black friday eda and feature engineer everything i'll be giving you i will be uploading this in my github so that you will be able to find it out just a second i'm doing it i'm uploading it okay guys so just uh, reload the page and uh, yes you will be able to see the file in the description so tomorrow also we are going to take up any other different data set and then we are trying to see that how things are going just reload the data set and tomorrow we'll continue the session uh, thank you everyone for joining and yes uh, i hope you liked it so thank you have a great day bye bye guys keep on rocking we'll see you tomorrow hello guys i hope everybody is able to hear me out so from that today we are basically going to solve flight price prediction and here we are basically going to do eda eda plus feature engineering so data set here i'm actually giving you the data set 
So if you go and see the data set, the data set looks something like this. Data train test set. Okay. Two XLS file will be there. So you have to download these two files. If you want to download, make sure that go to this download it right as a zip file and inside flight prediction we have this specific data set. This two data set we are going to take it up data train and test underscore set. And this problem statement was given uh, this flight price prediction problem statement was given in a hackathon that we are going to basically solve over here. And let's start. So initially we'll start with importing some basic libraries, importing basic libraries, quickly do it, which all libraries we require already we have done in yesterday's session. I'll write import pandas as pd, import numpy as np, then import matplotlib matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and then import cborn as sns import cborn as sns and then probably we will also be importing uh, we'll write matplotlib inline now guys many people usually ask me what is this used for matplotlib inline See, suppose if we want to probably show the diagram within this without writing plot dot show. So you can basically go with respect to this one matplotlib inline. So as soon as you plot anything, you don't have to write plot dot show and automatically it will get shown over here itself. So uh, now why I have specifically taken this data set because if we go and see this data set, there is something very amazing about this data set because it also has date time information okay so date time information you have to really be careful whenever you are working at it so that is the reason why i have specifically taken this uh, because i wanted to show you different different domain problem statements kind of data so that you will be able to see okay what all challenges you may probably face into it so as usual what i'm actually going to do first of all uh, i'm going to just uh, import the training data set which i will write pd.read underscore csv read underscore excel so let me just execute this one first so read the data set like this and here i'm basically going to give my data train dot xls and if i go and probably see my train underscore df dot head you will be able to see this specific data set so here you have airline date of journey source destination route if it is given like this bangalore to delhi De departure time arrival time duration total stops additional info price so after this what we have to probably do is that same thing i'll do it for the test data set so here i'm going to basically do it for test data set so test uh test underscore df and specifically here i will write test xls this is the file name and if i want to display test df dot head so here is my test data only one column will not be there which is this last column that you can see that is price so this both are done i hope everybody is done now as usual uh, after importing i did not try uh, training the model see if if you are getting model score bad like 12 percent 13 percent with the help of linear regression or uh, other algorithms try different algorithms right like uh, other algorithms are also there like decision tree regressor random forest regressor right you have xg boost regressor no one tried that i don't know you're just saying 12 and 13 percent for linear and lasso and you're just keeping quiet that is the problem with you all you know where i have taught all the machine learning algorithms previously why you don't want to try with other machine learning algorithm obviously linear regression creates a straight line and there you have so many features so your accuracy will be bad see if you don't get this much common sense then at that point of time i think trust me for cracking interviews it will become difficult how you will work in the real world uh, industry so if you go and use different different algorithms so i i always tell you do hyperparameter tuning on top of it i i just did linear regression sir ridge sir raso sir i got 12% now tell me what to do i don't want to do anything like that you will learn 
Tomorrow you will give a problem statement how you will do that. At that time Krishna will not come, right? So, <clears throat> let's do one thing first of all. I am just going to combine this train df and test df into another variable called as final df. So, what I am going to do in order to combine, I will just write train df dot append. And then I will write test df. Comma. And train df dot append of test df. So test df is my this data set and train df is this data set. So once I will do this, I can go and finally write final underscore df dot head. So this what I am doing, I am combining both the train and test. Remember, if I go and see the tail path, if I go and see the tail path, then you will be able to see that you will have some NAN values in the prices. This is because of the test data set. Okay. So this much, I think you will be able to do it. Appending the data set, which is getting converted into this one. Now see the features looks quite complex over here because the feature that you have is like airlines. You have date of journey, source, destination, route, then departure time, then arrival time, you know, arrival time. Then you have duration. Then you have total stops then you have additional info very you different different types of columns are there so a lot of feature engineering is basically required and here i'm just going to focus more on feature engineering because we have done extensive eda now let's go ahead and try to do feature engineering on each and every field okay now the first field that you may probably see over here is something called as date of journey now in this date of journey you have obviously you have a day, you have months and you have year and probably just let me just write final underscore df dot info. So here you can basically see that date of journey is also an object. So date of journey is an object that basically means it is in a string format. So we have to convert that into a date time format. Now this after converting probably into a date time format, what I will do is that I, I need to pick up this specific information like day this will basically be my month and this may probably be my year so this technique from this particular field i have to create three more fields which will specify my day month and year so here what do we say to this is that we are trying to create a derived feature now tell me guys from date of journey how do i create this three fields anyone you can actually try it out and you can basically let me know you can try it out you can say some code how we should go ahead with doing so here basically I am starting my feature engineering process and what I told that first I will try to take out or derive some features like from this I will definitely be able to take out day, month and year. How do we do it? So for that what I am actually going to do it in a very simple way. I am basically going to say that final underscore df and I will try to create three features as I said one feature will basically be my month or date first I'll start with date so one feature will be this the next feature that I'm actually going to create is with respect to month and the third feature that we are probably going to create is with respect to year so this three feature we need to derive and we need to create and how do we do it we already know that I have a feature which is called as date of journey, right? Now from this date of journey, I basically have to split, okay? Split by using what character? Split by using this specific character that is this forward slash. If I do probably split, then I will basically be able to get three important information. One is this 6, 06 and 2019. Now in the case of date, I need to focus on the first index that is on the zeroth index. Then in, in the case of month, I need to focus on the first index and in case of 2019, I need to focus on the second index. So that is what I'm actually going to do over here. So I'm basically going to write over here dot str dot split because I have to convert that into an str uh, if I need to basically do the split. And after doing the split, if I copy this and if I run this code, let's see what will happen. You will be able to see over here if I write zero. That basically means I will be able to get this all entire information. Okay, so here you can see that 
if i write string sorry here i have written zero then also i am getting this specific information what i will do i'll also use one keyword called dot str of zero so here you can see that i am able to get all the dates okay so this is all my dates that i am actually able to get so in order to get the dates i'm just going to use this and in forward i'm just going to write dot str of zero so this is the this is the process that we can basically use to take out the date no need to convert into date or time also because once we get that we'll convert that into an integer then if i'm doing for forecasting kind of task at that point of time i may use it then for the month i need to just change the index to 1 and for this i need to change the index to 2 so here i will be able to get date month and year now if i execute you will be able to see this final underscore df dot head and head i'll just see the top two records here somewhere at the end you will be able to see date month and year is created this also works well you can apply a lambda function which is very very good so i'm just going to ping or copy paste this code over here this is also a very good technique how to do it definitely you can also do it with using this so he has given this specific technique where he has specifically used lambda function this will also definitely work so i hope everybody is able to understand till here okay so either of this code you can basically use and you can actually go ahead and do it but this is a very good technique of applying a lambda function very nice means efficient coding okay it's all about googling and trying to find out a better way that will definitely work okay now let's see in the next step what we have to do simple it is that we have to basically also make sure that we convert that into an integer right so integer also we need to convert that date month date month and year so in order to do this uh, it's very simple how do i do it i will just write final underscore df okay. is equal to final underscore df of date and i'm actually going to convert this into as type int okay then i'll copy this probably i'll paste it i'll paste it i'll do it for month and year but one mistake i'm definitely making over here i have to apply this to the same feature right so i'm just going to copy this here 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 i'll just make this to month and i'll just make this to year so once we do this and once we execute this has got executed now if i write final underscore dot df dot info and if i see so here you can see date month and year is now in 32 in 32 price is already float 64 but uh, we are starting to focus on different different features so uh, we have done this uh, let's go to the next feature now which one do you want to catch hold of the next feature since you have done it we'll do one more step is that we'll try to drop this particular feature now i don't require date of journey right now so what i'm actually going to do now i'll just write final underscore df dot drop and here i'm basically going to give my feature name which is date of i'll just copy this date of journey with axis is equal to one uh, in place is equal to true this we have already seen yesterday now if i go and probably see my final underscore df dot head of one and then here you can see month and year are there date is also there but you don't have any date of journey now let's go to the next feature next feature see this is how we have to catch one feature at a time and probably do ne the necessary changes okay so the next feature basically uh, we will go with respect to route let's say what we can do for this route also we'll try to understand okay arrival time route okay route uh, uh, let's wait for some time for route let's focus on the arrival time or departure time 
okay so let's do one thing let's focus on arrival or departure time first we'll focus on something and then a uh, similar type of fields always remember when you are probably doing feature engineering try to catch up similar types of field which we basically have to do again and again let's go ahead and take up arrival time now from this arrival time what you can do is that obviously you don't require this information like 22 march if i probably go and see around 10 records so here you will be able to see that wherever there is this gap this space how we can split it let's see if we are using some space over here we can definitely get something okay uh, if you are using this space and probably trying to split it i will probably be able to get the arrival time my arrival time should be in such a way that i should be only able to get this first four important information think over it because i don't require this 10 june and all because there is date for that I don't require that. I need to focus only on this first four values. So how do I do it? So I'll write final underscore df of arrival time dot str dot split. If I split with the help of an empty braces and if I write dot str or if I just execute this here, you'll be able to see like this right so out of all these things i just need to pick up the first value see in the first value i will be able to get all the important information okay like 425 715 only the first one i need to focus on so to get the first one i will just use indexing of str of zero and if i execute this now i will be able to get this particular value to do the same thing there is also one amazing code which can be done using this lambda function so here you can see dot apply lambda this 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 okay if i execute it sorry final underscore df and execute it here you can also see that i am getting the same information so what i am actually going to do i am going to use this particular code and make that changes in final underscore df of arrival time any one of the code you can basically use and you can do it more new new things you can basically get it in order to do it one thing that i forgot to check whether it has null value or not so price basically has null values it's okay that is for the test data route has one null value total stops has one null value route that basically means route in that specific it may be the same row it may be the other row but total stops has one null value and this has one null value everybody clear now from this arrival time we still have to take out the hour and we still have to take out the what we need to take out from this arrival time guys hour and minutes right so that specific thing i will do next step so here i'm actually going to write final underscore df with the same lambda function or in in an easy way you can basically do the split and here i will actually create two more features arrival underscore hour is equal to final underscore df arrival underscore time then you can use dot apply lambda or you can also do dot str dot split and this split will now happen with colon right because within the hours and this one colon is there so i'm going to split with the help of colon right so when i split with the help of colon it will be dot str dot split dot str of 0 if i write like this it will become my hour and similarly if i want to know the arrival minutes then i can basically write like this and here uh, i will just write str of 1 done and if i go and probably see now final underscore df dot head of 1 
you will be able to see this one and here you have arrival of hour and minute remember this is still in object type so i also need to convert this into an integer type so same thing if i go up i had written that specific code how to do it i'll just copy this one like this okay i will copy the code over here and keep it over here and here i am going to basically write arrival of hour and convert this into int type and arrival minute and convert this into int type so two steps one is converting into int type is also done over here along with this so if i execute it you will be able to now see that if i write final underscore df dot info now you will be able to see that there are integer values added in arrival hour and arrival min minutes so this is the code that i have actually written and then after that you can drop the arrival time so I, here i will write final underscore df dot drop arrival time arrival underscore time comma axis is equal to one in place is equal to two step by step we are doing it in a nice way so i hope everybody is able to see it. so now if i probably go and see my final underscore df dot head of one record here you will be able to see these things are also there okay uh, what about departure time i hope everybody will be able to do the same thing for the departure time just do it because departure is also having the same format so i'm just going to copy all the code paste it over here paste this also over here now paste this two line also over here and finally paste this also over here and keep it with respect to arrival time like that we had departure time right so i'm going to write departure time right depth time i'm going to copy this everywhere paste 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 and here i'm going to basically write the pt hour dept minutes this i don't require dept hour and this will be my dept minute so just by doing this i think everybody will be able to understand that we are going to change it now yes that will also work anirudh done oh error is coming let's see with base 10 22 10 Mm. oops this should be department of hour and department of me so i don't have to execute this again so i will just remove this paste it away well done so it's final underscore df dot info now you'll be able to see two more features getting added and it will be department of our and this one both will be there perfect we have done this now we have to take care of all these other things right airline and all are actually there so uh, departure is done now let's catch up route now inside this you will be able to see route is basically having this information like bangalore to delhi bangalore to delhi okay see anyhow over here you will be able to see that uh, even though i basically find out like what is the route like 
route 1 2 3 4 maximum to maximum over here you can see that there are two places like bangalore is the origin delhi is the destination here you have four different different places that basically means first you are going from kolkata to ixr then ixr to bbi then bbi to bangalore so total number of stops you have two over here in this particular case you just have one stop so what we will do is that we will try to capture the route one route two all the all the places over here over here in the source and destination you just have two values right number of stops you have two one like that you have right so it is better that we get this specific information very much clearly so that we actually be able to see route one route two route three route four like that right so one thing that you need to know over here is that you may definitely get uh, null values you may definitely get null values a lot of null values you may be getting but understand null values will be there for like if i want to capture for route 4 definitely null values will be there okay instead of this also what we can do we can also delete this and we can just focus on this total number of stops right total stops like total underscore stops we can also focus on this particular values also so what do you think should we do should we delete this specific feature directly and just focus on because we have the source and the destination and obviously we have number of stops but i just think like as a person right we really need to focus on two things okay first of all is that if probably i'm going from kolkata to bangalore and these two places are going then the price may increase drastically okay just not based on the top of the number of stops now in this particular case you can see from delhi to cok right here you have lucknow and bombay lucknow and bombay you feel that probably more price will be taken place over there so just see what you need to do we can definitely drop this route we can just focus on total stops but before focusing on total stops what i'm actually going to write i'm going to basically say final underscore dot total total stops dot unique if i write unique let's see how many total stops are there so here you have non-stops non-stop basically means probably uh it's like just a single stop here you can see here you can basically replace this with zero here you can replace with two here you can replace with one three this nan value if i try to see that uh there is one nan value i guess is null dot sum so here you can see one nan value you can replace it uh which one is required with respect to that okay so so everybody focus on doing what we will try to convert this into and map this values with 0 1 2 3 4 5 like that tell me someone tell me the code amazing so rishi has already written the code so rishi has basically said something like this by using the map so here is my final underscore df final underscore df so final underscore df total stops total stops dot map non-stop is equal to zero one stop is equal to one two stops is equal to two three is this for nan also if you want to place place it out because there is only one nan value so for nan also i will make sure that i can directly see right which is that specific record wait i can definitely see which is that specific record for nan just a second df of uh, total sorry final underscore df total stops dot um what i can do is that dot is null dot is null and here i can basically write final underscore df and i'll try to take out this specific values so here you can see route is nan but uh, the total number of stops is also nan so total number of stops is also nan route is also nan so here you can see from delhi to cochin okay delhi to cochin i don't think so there will be a direct flight but uh, which value do you want to replace with since it is just a single record i think it won't matter that much so let me do one thing let me just replace it with one stop or 
just common sense i think for kochi in bangalore to kochi at least one stop is required so like this i will just try to change it delhi to kochi sorry so i have got executed now okay and now if i go and probably see my final underscore df dot head you will be able to see this specific values and here you can see total stops has been converted into integer floating value now we can drop this route column so final underscore df drop route uh, i'm going to drop route from axis is equal to one and in place is equal to true because i don't definitely require two to information right so finally you can see final underscore df dot head here you have all the values amazing now what is the next thing that you should probably want to do guys i've deleted everything right so we have departure, department departure hour also we have dropped uh, total stops is also there let's catch up any other one you want to do additional info that all will be our normal uh feature engineering like transformation encodation we can do any special character if you if it is there somewhere probably we have to catch hold of that so if i write final underscore df and if i go ahead with additional info additional info dot unique how many unique values are there so here you can see this many unique values are there this can be converted into uh one hot encoded format because there are less number of records let me just check more anything that we can do with this data set anyone who wants to do some more things who wants to play with this data set who wants to tear apart this specific data set let me just see df dot final underscore df dot info now here you will be able to see all this are there additional info in the object that is fine duration is still there okay can we do something like convert this duration into something else no nah. duration into minutes i basically need to convert duration into minutes right so this 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 i can basically apply a mathematical formula mm, i will just take this let's say come on try it out guys try it out so here i'm basically going to write duration oh this way 2 hours 50 minutes can be mentioned as 2.50 this will also be a good way um but what if i convert duration into minutes that would actually be amazing okay so here i'm basically going to say duration okay if i do split of 0 that basically means i'm getting my answer as uh str of 0 split oh if i use this blank space i'll be getting two hours okay two hours two hours and probably i have to further split it down i have to further split it down because h is there okay h is there this is becoming a series right now if i do dot split h okay series does not have a split perfect so if i have like this duration to minutes sir can you run with split it down with h yes dot replace dot replace will work over here see this becomes a series right now okay if i execute this and I'm actually getting something like this, okay. Then if I write str of zero, comma zero. No, this will also not work. Zero, 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 zero. Come on, anybody? String dot replace. Mm, this is a series, okay this is a series 
this is a series guys understand we cannot do string dot something like that see if i go and probably see the type of this this will definitely become a series see it is a series i can search in the google okay search in the google series split pandas series pandas provide method to split uh, series series str dot split str dot split again i have to do dot str dot split okay so here i'm going to basically write str dot split and here i'm going to basically use h see i'm getting it right and then i can basically again write str of zero so here i'm actually getting all the values this should be multiplied this should be converted into an integer no this will actually be okay so here i'm actually able to get all this information okay this will basically give me the hours if i want to convert this into minutes okay if i want to basically convert this into minutes what i have to do um now this is entirely series if i want to convert this into minutes as type yeah as type can work dot as type int no error is coming probably no it will not work but str of zero will work so let's consider that i am converting this into df of duration underscore hour is equal to this one duration of hour final underscore df if i execute this final underscore df dot head So duration hour I have actually got. So with the help of duration hour we will be able to do it. Okay. But you also have to get the minutes. Because minutes are also very important. But before that what I am actually going to do. I am basically going to write. Uh, final df. Uh, dot info. Because I want to check. Whether. This is still in object right. So what I am actually going to do. I am basically going to convert this as type. Okay, final underscore df. See, guys, for me also, same thing. I am also facing the same difficulty what you face, right? But we need to think of an approach. If you are able to think as an approach, obviously that will get solved. Uh, what is the error for int? There is 5m huh? somewhere. Somewhere 5m is there. Huh? I hope I have done the syntax correct. Definitely 5m is there somewhere. 5m value is there. Final. Final underscore df of duration. Double is equal to 5m. Final underscore df. Okay, five minutes. Okay, duration is also there for five minutes. Okay, this is the problem. But how how come five minutes? Mumbai to Hyderabad will take only five minutes. How this is possible? It is better we drop this. We drop this features, right? So if I just use this, is equal to this one, not possible, right? So how, how this will be possible? So tell me, if you want to remove this, what do you have to do? Halt. Uh, halt duration, okay. 
हॉल ड्यूरेशन दैट इज द टोटल ड्यूरेशन राइट या वी हैव टू प्रॉब्ली ड्रॉप दिस रिकॉर्ड राइट ओके टेल मी हाउ टू ड्रॉप दिस रिकॉर्ड ना ड्रॉप रो एक्सिस जीरो ओके परफेक्ट सो इफ आई राइट फाइनल अंडर स्कोर डी एफ डॉट ड्रॉप एंड हियर आई एम बेसिकली गोइंग टू गिव माई इंडेक्स नंबर शुड आई यूज आई लॉक टू ड्रॉप इट बिकॉज हियर इट विल आस्क फॉर लेबल सो सपोज इफ आई गिव सिक्स फोर फाइव सेवन फोर कॉमा एक्सिस इज इक्वल टू जीरो यूल बी एबल टू सी दैट इट विल गेट एग्जीक्यूटेड राइट इट इज गेटिंग एग्जीक्यूटेड देन से इन प्लेस इज इक्वल टू वन and same thing i will probably do it for 2660 2660 kaun sa plane hai receive type as input for argument in place expected type boolean oh in place is equal to true true so executed this is working fine now if i go and see this one i am actually getting empty now okay so i have actually fixed this i will convert this into as in type done and then i will multiply this all by 60 multiply by 60 so here you can see i am actually able to get this in the form of minutes now let it be in hour only then no problem if you don't want to do also it is fine at least hours will increase but if you are considering the minute part also so try to use that okay and try to convert that that is just given to you as an assignment please try to do for the minutes also try to get that specific data what i have done for minutes okay everybody you have to basically do it okay don't say that krish you did not do in the class so we are not going to do don't do it so here you have integer 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 price is float additional info is object then you have duration now we can drop the duration final underscore df dot drop okay duration with axis is equal to 1 okay and then in place is equal to true so this is done why 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 capital d capital d capital d okay duration done and then finally we have final underscore df dot head of one so here you can see i have all these things remaining all have been converted remaining all are category features so in order to do for the category features what do we need to do simple we will try to first of all see with respect to airlines so uh airline dot unique if i try to see this how many are this specific airline final underscore df final underscore df so here you can see only this many airlines are there so we will try to do label encoding for all of them now in order to do the label encoding i will write from sk learn dot pre processing dot pre processing import label encoder many people are saying right krish why you are doing get dummies get dummies can also be done but since we try to work with train and test data so it is better to use the transform techniques right so here i'm going to basically use label encoder is equal to label encoder okay so label encoder is there and then finally you do it for every data set that you want like airline source destination and additional info so this four features so here you have final underscore df and here you can basically write airline airline okay label encoder dot fit underscore transform and here i am basically going to give my feature that is final underscore dm on airline right so like this i have written for this now you do it for other feature also like this same way how many features are there four right then you have source 
source you can put it over here then you have destination and then finally you have additional info once you do this done and this is your final underscore df dot shape if i try to see they are on 14 columns which is good enough and if i want to probably see my final underscore date dot uh, head of first two records then you can see all these things perfect okay i've done just, just done label encoding you can also do other type of encoding that is one hot encoding it's okay guys i've done label encoding now one more step you can do is one hot encoding from sk learn dot preprocessing import one hot encoder just do it no kevin uh, don't do it with get dummies because see whenever we have a test data we need to transform that test data right so we can save this encoder in the form of pickle file right so one hot encoder so o h e i'll write it as one hot encoder and then you can do the same thing where you are specifically saying this okay airline ohe dot fit transform okay and then you have all the necessary other information done okay do it okay i'm getting some error what is the error expected a 2d array expected a 2d array over here reshape your data okay i understood what is the problem what is the problem i understood mm. how to give it as wait i will execute it in front of you till then just see what is the error that we are getting in this i have understood the error of it transform c if i execute this i'll be getting an error expected 2d array dot series okay this is a series dot 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 ohe transform np dot travel yeah np dot travel okay but i don't think so this will work there will be an error expected a 2d array instead of getting one i can understand this i should not give this in the form of series okay that is the problem i should definitely not give in the form of series so if i write final underscore df of airline So here you can see that I'm getting in the form of series. This should not be in the form of series. Use two brackets. Like this, you think? No, but then it becomes something else. Final underscore df. double cases we are getting compressed sparse row format np dot array df of airline okay one way i can basically do over here is like np dot array final of dinner dot reshape minus one comma one
same thing we are getting let's try this airlines source so here will be source here will be destination and uh, here will be additional info but i hope you are able to understand Pass one is ambiguous using get shape of zero. Ah, uh, this is one hot encoding we are doing. Already encoding is done. Wait, 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 wait. Let's see. Final underscore df dot head. So this is one hot encoding. So if I probably search for one hot encoding, um, SQL on. Let's see the documentation. You are encoding many times. No, I did not encode many times. I just encoded one time, right? So after encoding, that value get has got converted to this. Right now, if you go and see final underscore df. Final underscore df dot info. So here you will be able to see that this is all converted into integer types. Okay, I know I I should not had done this encoding separately like this fit transform. Instead of this, I could had focused on one hot encoder. It would had done away completely, but it's okay. Let's do one thing then. Simple. If this is not working. I'm just going to do a very simple thing. So I'm 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 basically going to do final underscore df of of airline dot get underscore dummies. Oh, get underscore dummies is not there, huh? Okay. Pd dot get dummies, right? Sometimes syntax it's very difficult to remember all the syntax. df of airline final df so let's go ahead and do this and then you will be able to get it <laughs> try to create a different data frame let's say this is df1 then i will create another data frame which is df2 here i will say pd dot get underscore dummies And then here, basically, write it as other column final underscore df of the next column that you wanted. Which one is the column that you are working on? Source, destination, and additional info. Then combine those data frame. Train data. This is also nice. Will it work like this? This is also a very good way. See, one single line they have written. This will be my final underscore df. Columns are airline source destination and additional info. Sources additional info also. And probably this will definitely work. So what all things he has done? He has written pd dot get dummies final underscore df. Columns with this all name drop first is equal to true. If I execute it, here is all the values that you will be able to get it. Thank you all. Uh, have a great day ahead. And